Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we're going to be going over Squad's recent dev Q&A. If you missed this, you're not alone. It was a March Q&A where you would submit questions, and then at the end of March, the devs were supposed to answer them. However, about a week or so ago, the devs posted on the official Discord that they are delaying the release of the March Q&A until early next week. We appreciate your patience with us while we take this extra time. This will allow us to pack as much info in as possible. Now that's perfectly acceptable. You can delay things and especially if the whole purpose of the delay is in order to get as much information as possible, when it comes to a community Q&A, that is the best possible reason for a delay. But what we actually got seems to completely contradict that delay. Maybe they just didn't have the answers. Maybe they needed a little bit more PR speak to it. But at the end of the day, it just kind of seems like an afterthought. And especially when it was delayed, I was expecting something much more exciting and uh, this is what we got. It's both disappointing and exciting. I, I don't know what type of emotions to feel, so let's just go through the Q&A and I think you'll see what I mean. So in total, there were nine questions asked, with the first one being, how long does OWI intend to develop squad? UE4 is starting to show its age. What are the plans for continued development? Will this ever be upgraded to the UE5 or another engine? There's no end in sight for squad's development. We have lots planned and excited to keep the game going with new features, content, and game modes for as long as we can. Regarding UE5, we currently have a small team dedicated to looking into this shiny new tech. They are looking at what impact it will have on the current game, what improvements or setbacks we might see, and how long it might take to upgrade. So, uh, this doesn't really answer anything. Uh, there's no timeline on how far the, the squad devs see themselves developing the game. Now, obviously, from a business standpoint, you don't want to say, hey, we only got one year left or whatever it is so i understand that but also when it comes to the ue5 it's also kind of a non-answer personally speaking i would be super surprised if squad was ever upgraded to ue5 so i really think that's a non-starter if you're expecting it to happen i'm not saying it won't but it's like a 0.2 percent chance that it actually does happen just based on the history squad has had with developing even just iterative updates in the ue4 engine all right, next question. Would you consider hiring a workshop mod developer contract to reach your achievements? I'm I'm like scratching my head why this was even included because it's very common that the devs have done this. And the answer, we are currently in contact with a few modding teams and individual modders to help us with various areas of development. This can include anything from creating new content to helping us set up or improve existing content. Historically, we have always been open to working with modding teams and we do not see that changing. We've seen this with the Canadian Armed Forces mod. We've seen this with the Aussie faction mod. Supposedly, we have some elements of what Tactical Collective, who have done the French Foreign Legion or French Faction mod. Personally, I think they've done a little work on the VDV sub faction since I've seen a lot of the same stuff in their VDV mod, but I don't know if that's actually confirmed. This is just such an odd question because we know they do this and a lot of the prior modders are actually now working on squad. All right, question three, what is an area of the game you're looking to address next? What problem with the game flow is looking to be solved, if anything? Answer, we're looking at addressing pain points for new players, including closing the game loop off with more detailed feedback for players. This will allow them to see how the overall team did as a whole, where ticket losses and gains were, as well as onboarding newer players more easily into the experience. We plan on working on it iteratively over the next year, with each update hopefully including something pushing us closer to this goal. Now in here is actually a lot of cool information, specifically talking about the ticket losses and gains. Now I don't know how they're going to do this, but I used to play a lot of RTS games. I'm talking your old school Warcraft, your Starcraft, Age of Empires, and in all those games, you see kind of like a graph of where your team did well. That type of stuff is really cool. And frankly, I just wish we had some sort of visual here on what they're thinking about. It's really just included as a throwaway statement here when players for the longest time have been asking to see exactly how they affected the enemy team. Question four, when will thermal sights and laser rangefinders be added for MBTs and IFVs? Answer, thermal optics are something that we would like to add in the future. However, we can't commit to timelines due to limitations with resources and technology. We would wish for a thermal system to not only look and feel authentic, but to work realistically rather than be a post-process effect. Laser rangefinders are already present in some IFVs in all tanks. Once again, a really odd question for them to pick because any person who has been in a vehicle knows that there are laser rangefinders, and I think like 90% of them. The T62 doesn't have a laser rangefinder. The BMP-1 also doesn't. 
Obviously, if it's like an open top machine gun, you won't have it, but every remote weapon system has a laser rangefinder. This is just, a, once again, I feel like a filler throwaway question, at least on the latter part, because that's literally already in the game. And it kind of makes me feel like they just made this question up. No actual squad vehicle player would ask to add laser rangefinders because they're literally in there and they use them every day. However, the thermal optics part of this question is really interesting since I think this is the first time the devs have actually confirmed that they do want to add thermals. I was looking over my past dev chats where I've recorded in years gone by and I can't find it, but I could have sworn the devs had mentioned they really didn't like the potential of thermal optics in squad because of the potential overpoweredness that vehicles would have against infantry. Being able to sit way off in the distance and just plunk at heat signatures could be super boring, super overpowered, and infantry would feel even more useless than they do with the infantry combat overhaul when it comes to vehicle combat. Now, one small sidebar is if they do want to add thermals, then maybe they're trying to think of other ways that infantry could be more effective at killing vehicles. A couple years ago, when the USMC were finally going to be added to squad, we had a teaser image where we actually saw a javelin launcher. So maybe if we do have thermals, we're also going to have some other things that infantry would have in order to help deal with those thermals. Adding thermals to the game has a lot of potential repercussions in infantry balance, vehicle balance, gameplay as a whole. And in past Q&As, the developers would actually go in depth into why certain things would or would not change. Just saying, yeah, we want it is okay, cool, but that is very, very shallow when it comes to a Q&A. And once again, I'm just left asking more questions and kind of disappointed with the answer. Question five, can we see more tutorials in the future? I'm thinking of a basic SL guide on how to make fobs and call command strikes, basic vehicle gunnery tutorial, dedicated AT tutorial. Answer, yes, we plan on completely reworking our tutorial into a set of shorter tutorials that cover a wide variety of topics, beginning with the basics and moving into more advanced areas and topics. We also plan to add more tools for players to have better visibility on information that is currently hidden or considered tribal knowledge. Our goal with this is to have players to be able to search for this information more easily from within the game. Now, this seems like a good question question seems like a good answer but uh they already answered this exact question back in the september 2023 q a and they did a lot better answering it in the september one they say they plan on doing it they have specifics for lat hat tutorials and they go a lot more in depth than whatever this answer was i feel like it's a little bit of a cop out to not only answer the same exact question you answered in a past q a but then give no additional information in that answer if anything, this current answer has less information than the previous answer because at least in the previous Q&A, we knew for a fact that, hey, we are going to get an anti-tank tutorial. We're going to get lat stuff. We're going to hat stuff. We're going to have certain tutorials to help specific kits understand how to play the game better. And if you do it, hey, we're going to reward you. That's a great answer. This is kind of a rehash and feels very PR speak and kind of a non-answer while still answering the question. Question six, does the dev team have plans for any kind of player progression? We have no plans at this time for a traditional progression system, but we do plan on adding a socially driven progression system that allows players to recognize each other for their contributions. More on this in upcoming communications. <laughs> once, once again, I'm just kind of like, just that's a throwaway statement, just tell us. Like, this is a Q&A. Just saying yes and we'll talk about it later feels to me like, then why even have the Q&A? You're not actually answering any real questions because I want to know more specific details or maybe you can even give me some examples. Is it going to be something like Overwatch? Is it going to be like Hell Let Loose? Is it going to be some new system that you've created because, hey, this guy was a good vehicle player, so does he get a vehicle come in? Does this guy have a squad leader come in? Does he have a just good in general, hey, you got a lot of kills, so you're a good player command? Are there rewards for commendations? Are there cosmetics for commendations? Do we actually have a certain level? Any of this at all would have been nice to hear about. Even if it wasn't finalized, at least give us some examples of potential items that you're looking into. I want to be excited about this. And honestly, deep down, I am kind of excited about it. I just once again wish the devs gave us a little bit more information on what exactly that could be. Question seven, any plans to bring in new commander assets? Answer, we are in the process of adding new commander assets and in the future, we plan to completely rework the current commander system to a higher standard. 
that also leans into the asymmetric design of different factions and units within those factions. That is awesome to hear since over the past few years where we've had plenty of modders come up and show really cool command assets like smoke screens, helicopter gun runs, even bunker buster bombs with the French faction. I do wish they elaborated a little bit more in saying, hey, it's strategic, it's tactical call-ins. Uh, there are some things that can help support your team. Maybe you can do more destruction, help conceal certain positions. Literally anything to help us understand what ideas they're thinking about would have been helpful. The only other command system that I can think of that is very, very different is something like Hell Let Loose, where you actually have your squad go around the map. You can create different nodes. You have manpower, fuel, and you can do different call-ins based on those resources that generate throughout the map. Are we doing something like that? I have no idea, and I wish the devs would have told us a little bit more. Question eight, how far along the pipeline is the tow launcher rework? Did I miss something? What is the tow launcher rework? Is this something that people do you know about the post right now in the comments? If you actually know that they were working on changing tow launchers, because I never thought that that was a problem. I didn't know that there was going to be a rework. I literally have no idea how this question came to be. Uh, but here we go. The answer. We are in the process of reworking our missile system in game to be more authentic, as well as have more flexible with intent to enable us to add more types of missile systems in the future. We will have more to share on this topic in the coming months. Once again, kind of like a, hey, yeah, we're working on it but we don't actually know, or we do know, but we don't want to tell you yet. It, it kind of defeats the purpose of the Q&A if all of these answers are just non-answers, because are we talking about new payloads for a tow missile? The tow that we actually use for all the NATO forces, they have a lot of different ways to destroy targets. You have heat rounds, tandem rounds, uh, bunker busting rounds. Is that what you're talking about? Are we talking about top-down attack systems like javelins? Are we talking about stinger missiles maybe? I have no idea when you talk about missile system reworks and now I'm just trying to think of everything and nothing all at the same time. And lastly, question nine, we didn't even get 10 questions here. Are you going to be balancing the factions with upcoming voting systems so it doesn't become too one-sided? Answer, yes, faction balancing will be an ongoing and iterative process using data points from analytics, as well as feedback and observations. We want to make sure every faction feels fun to play and no one gets left behind with the voting system. Now, I want to take that question and compare it to a question that was asked in the September 2023 Q&A, and it's not on the same topic but I'm gonna briefly just show you the difference in the in-depth that that question and answer was compared to the one we just got. The answer is one, two, three, four, five paragraphs, and we know that OWI Patrick and Cannon answered it together. OWI Patrick is the lead programmer, and Cannon is the senior producer. So right from this answer, we know exactly who it's coming from, and because they're listed on it, we know that we can trust that information. Now, I'm not gonna read this word for word, but it's incredibly in depth on a couple key performance issues that they ran into, specifically VRAM usage, a level of details or LODs that they've had to adjust throughout the process of upgrading the game, Unreal Engine 4.27 upgrades and problems that caused, as well as improving performance for AMD users. There's a lot of information packed into this answer. It's very detailed. You understand the what, you understand the why, and you understand the future of if there are any lingering issues that they're still working on. This is how you answer a question. And once again, in this question, especially it's the last question of the current Q&A, there weren't even 10 questions, just nine, and maybe honestly eight because one of the questions was already asked in the previous Q&A. Personally, I wanna understand why you think faction balancing will be ongoing and iterative. And honestly, we should learn a little bit more about the factions and what's working, what's not. Are you guys seeing certain factions be picked more than others? Are you seeing players starting to learn, not necessarily metas, but how each sub faction works? Do you like that now, since you have sub-factions, you can just balance them amongst themselves instead of the layers? And what about the CTAS? The British CTAS has just been removed from the game. Maybe re-including or mix-matching vehicles could also be a very good way to balance? There's literally no additional information in this question, so although it is good to know they want to do it, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't even know if they're actually analyzing the right stuff in doing it in the future. As a whole, this Q&A has some really good information in it. We know that they're gonna be working on, I guess, a commendation system for rewarding players. We know there's gonna be tutorials, but we already knew that. We know that they want to include thermals in the future. I guess they're changing how missiles work. 
Uh, it's good. There's some cool information in here, but at the end of the day, I'm just left wanting more information and details. And I'm also kind of curious why this was delayed. This is honestly something I could have probably made up in one, not even afternoon, just a little bit time spent on the Word document because there's no specifics, there's no details, and it's just, yeah, we're thinking about it in the future. But I don't know, I could just be salty, I could just be jaded, I don't know, am I out of line thinking this way? Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited about all these things, if you wanted more information, or maybe you agree with me that this Q&A was kind of a downer despite having some cool information when you pick through it. Drop me a comment below, give it a like if you liked the video, and of course, subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.